So the trauma triphasic model, stage one, stage two, stage three, which we all should be embracing because we are trauma therapists, but if not, no worries. Our stage one, phases one and two, um, you're gonna be um, working with a client. And if you're picking up um, their inability to experience a sense of self, if they're not feeling real, they need to find solid ground. If they're struggling, struggling with the positive adaptive beliefs, then polyvagal is our first course of action. Polyvagal, I told uh, Angie this before the conference, and maybe I've been telling her this for months, polyvagal is where it's at. We all need to understand polyvagal. Everybody's going to be doing polyvagal. Polyvagal and parts work. So um, let's meet Dr. Porges here. I have a phenomenal picture with him from the conference. He's so sweet. Um, I've had a relationship with his son, Seth, uh, because I really like um, Seth's video. And I hope that you guys were able to watch the video that Angie put out um, over the weekend. Um, Seth is, like I said, Dr. Porges' son. They have been writing a book together and it's coming out in September. So I thought it would be super cool if you guys had watched Seth's, Seth's video. I think that Seth put this video together and I, I do not say this with any uh, malintent, but I think Seth was like, dad, nobody knows what you're talking about. Like I have tried so hard to understand Dr. Porges, even the presentation at the conference. I was like, I don't understand. So Seth, you know, Seth is a, um, uh, he is an actor. He's a comedian. He's a director. I, I think Seth uh, or Dr. Porges said, you know what, Seth, why don't you make something for him? And he did. And that's where that video came from. It is the best 28 minutes. You, we show it in, um, uh, jails. We show it, show it with, uh, we can show adolescents can watch it. We have families watch it together. Um, it's an excellent video to be introducing very basic language for, uh, polyvagal. So, um, what Seth introduced to us is the uh, trauma, uh, we added the word trigger, but the trauma traffic light. Basically, it gives our clients very easy language to discuss what state they are in. We're talking about self states. We're talking about ego states. We're talking about um, uh, where these blocking beliefs come from. And so very easy. Green is going to be our socially engaged, um, relaxed, present um, this is our goal in life uh, state or zone. Yellow is our fight, flight, freeze, fawn. It is our activated, mobilized. I'm here to protect myself. And then red is this danger didn't go away and I need to shut down. I need to freeze. I need to um, numb myself. I need to disappear. I need to dissociate. And it also feels good because it's numbing. So we're going to be looking at polyvagal from um, a traffic light perspective. And um, this, I like I said, is the video. Uh, I, I kind of want to know how many people watched it, but I don't want to uh, call you out. So um, anyway, I hope you did. Um, definitely uh, take watch it after the presentation. Put it on in your car. Okay, don't watch it. Just listen to it. But um, you can't watch it enough. It's just, it's excellent information. <laughs> I haven't seen... Um, the book, it comes out in September that Seth and Stephen wrote together, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping they use the traffic light as their analogy. We will mm -hmm. see. I can't really promote the book till I've read it, but with that being said, I can promote the two men that wrote it together. Um, on my website and what you guys received as well is the chart that we use with our clients that also speak to the trauma traffic light. So when our clients are in their green zone, when they're in a green state, when they're curious, compassionate, um, calm and connected, if those words sound familiar, the eight C's of IFS, um, here is where we want our client to at least have one foot when we're in dual attention. When our clients move into their sympathetic nervous system, and Angie was speaking to how uh, at the conference, they use this language um, throughout, which was really interesting. Uh, the sympathetic nervous system is gonna be your fight, flight, freeze, spawn. It is mobilized. It is an increase in heart rate. It's an increase in blood pressure. Um, it is. Uh, it has adrenaline and cortisol that's released into your body. You are active. You're gonna solve this problem. You're gonna figure out how to solve this problem. This is where we experience panic and fear and anxiety. It's an, increase of the heart rate, your face can turn red, your speech can get faster, um, your palms can get sweaty. There's all types of, of ways that we can identify when we're in our yellow zone. And then last but not least, this is dissociation. 
This is our shutdown. This is going to be our dorsal vagal collapse. It is um, uh, depression. It's helplessness. It's uh, shame. It's confusion, being disoriented. Uh, this is where our heart rate drops dramatically uh, below resting rate. You can have people that pass out um, or get dizzy as their heart goes from a sympathetic uh, into a dorsal vagal. And by the way, the uh, polyvagal is heart rate variability studies. So um, that's how Stephen came across this third state of self. So um, the red zone is going to be our dissociation zone. The reason why I like this chart, and I know that there are other um, window of tolerance charts out there that are phenomenal, is that you can't get to red without going through yellow. So this is where EMDR comes in because we can come in and desensitize, you know, I swear a little bit, the crap out of all of our triggers here in yellow and teach our clients about green and move them back and forth from yellow to green. And then we don't have to dissociate anymore. And that's why this is our first tool that we want to go to if we have clients that are highly dissociative. But the other key piece is that you can't go from dissociation, the red zone, to green. You have to go through yellow. So when I have a client that says, I hate my father for molesting me. Well, when you think about and you look at that part of you, what comes up? I get, I'm so confused and disoriented. So this client goes from being angry to shut down. We see this all the time. Well, how do you get that client to head toward green? You get them angry again. Well, I want you to be angry about what you just told me. I want you to be experiencing it somatically. I want your heart to start to pump. I want your blood pressure to go up. You move them back into their sympathetic nervous system. And then our goal with our tools is to then move them into the green um, just because we wouldn't want to do uh, EMDR up here in the red zone, but definitely in the yellow with the goal of moving into the green. And I'm going to be using this language throughout the whole presentation. We've got our ventral vagal calm connected. We have our sympathetic fight flight free spawn with an increased heart rate. And then we have our dissociation shut down numbing, which is the red zone. Uh, very easy language. Client comes in and says, I was in red all weekend. Okay, let's talk about that. Um, I'm just threw this in there because it's, it's, um, going to be on my website. It's just applying IFS to the green, yellow, red. It's, it's picking up, um, as far as what other therapists are utilizing. Uh, Ruth Culver does some excellent work. She's, I believe out of the UK. Um, she's on, there's a great Facebook group that she's, uh, posts a lot in. So if you're interested, you can just, uh, check it out. I, that's just, I just threw it on there so that you'd see that they've already incorporated, uh, parts work and IFS into the polyvagal. So when we work with our clients, we want to start in yellow. We don't want to start in green because they don't know what green is. A lot of our clients are going to say, I have no idea what it feels like to be calm, or there's no such thing as, as something that's good. Um, and, and they have every right to say that. And we're not going to, that's going to be a part of them. And we're not going to argue with them. So usually we can start in yellow and yellow is going to be our fight, flight, freeze, fawn. And fawn is codependence, just quick definition. It is mobilized. It is action. It is the client moving. They are planning. They are trying to figure out what to do. Their amygdala hijack with the intention to problem solve. So there's no access to the prefrontal cortex here. It's a fight, flight, freeze. It is an autonomic nervous system response. And it, like I said, with the increase in heart rate, if you get your heart rate above 110 beats per minute, you've lost connection with your prefrontal cortex, your thinking brain, and you're going to be in your limbic system. And there's a lot going on there that's going to be um, very impulsive about safety. It is the second layer in evolutionary development. It is the sympathetic branch. There's a ton of language. I'm not going to get into it. But the takeaway here is that it's increased heart rate and blood pressure uh, and a decreased rest and digest. Then the next one that we're going to look at is the red zone or the red state. Um, clients are in red a lot. A red is that shutdown. It is when they are immobilized. And there's two types of freeze. This is a question that comes up a lot. The freeze that's in yellow is the freeze where I have to stay still. And the freeze in red is a collapse freeze. I'm paralyzed. And the system is preparing for death. And we call it a dorsal vagal shutdown. And we can call it red zone or red state. We can make it easy. It's about numbing. It's dissociation. 
it's thing, it's a thing death and there are opiates that are released into the bloodstream so it can feel good and it's immobilized and your heart rate is below resting rate. It is the original evolutionary development of our species. The more danger you're in, the more ancient your response. And this is that reptilian response. And you can go into all the details with all the language if that's something that works for you. But in my office, we just call it flop and drop because that we think that's funny and we call it the red zone. And this is the zone and the state that we need our clients to um, learn to work out of. And then there's green, this is our goal. As I said, complex clients are going to have no idea what green is. They're going to have what we call a fake red that they think is green, like you know, smoking weed. I'm in my green when I'm smoking my weed. That's great. And it's fake red, but we're not going to say that right away. Um, but we want to work with our clients around finding moments in their life when they experience green. So it can be a moment in time like biting into a burger or having your cat climb on your lap and purring. It is the complete opposite of dissociation. And the key with using green zone language is it doesn't have to be your happy. We just want you to feel okay or fine in a moment's time. And this is about resting heart rate. Uh, and there's a lot of um, different ways that we can work with our clients on the green zone. Like for example, with my adolescents, they do poly or they do um, playlists, music playlists for green, yellow, and red. Uh, it always cracks me up uh, when I see what's in the yellow and what's in the red. But green, uh, you know, uh, Chris Smith whole play always shows up in green, which is nice. Uh, I agree with that. So there are just some fun things that we can do uh, when we're working with our polyvagal red, yellow, and green. And our green is going to be our most recent newest path. It's our um, uh, it's our prefrontal cortex. It's our window of tolerance. It's going to be where we feel connected and secure and calm and social and present and mindful. It is one moment at a time. And we have ways of strengthening and enhancing just these one moments with our slow, short sets of bilateral. Um, so we have the tools and this stuff works. That's all I can say to you. And so what we want to do with our clients is we want to start creating um, a map so that they can look at themselves from a polyvagal perspective. Polyvagal perspective being we start with yellow. Uh, I use BASP because I do a lot of work with dissociation and, you know, you can use whatever you want as far as a way to come up with ideas of um, talking to your clients about these different states of self or different zones that they're in. And when they're in their sympathetic, mobilized, fight, flight, freeze, bond, what are some behaviors that they experience? What are some emotions that they experience? What are body sensations? And what's your belief system? What are your cognitions when you're in that yellow zone? And then we move into red and we do the same thing. When you're in your red zone, when you're shut down, you're immobilized, you're under the weighted blanket, you're watching Netflix for five hours and you can't move, what's going on for you? What are the behaviors? What are the emotions? What are the body sensations? And how do you feel about yourself and your environment? And then if they're ready for it, we move to green. A lot of our clients are not ready yet. And that's fine. We meet them where they're at. This is a feelings chart that uh, my team and I put together to help with our polyvagal perspective, because basically we're looking at green words, we're looking at red words, and we're looking at yellow words. And our yellow words are going to be an increased heart rate. Um, this is, you know, where we're furious and enraged and agitated and hot, panicky, scared, frightened. That's going to be an increase in heart rate. It's a mobilized, I'm in danger uh, type of reaction. It's an autonomic nervous system. Um, response, which is unconscious, by the way. The red zone is going to be the drop in heart rate. It's going to be the um, uh, depressed, bewildered, trapped, trouble, regret, distress. We can't do uh, EMDR uh, phases four, five, and six when we're in our red zone because our client isn't, um, they don't, we don't have access to them. And so then we're looking at um, green. Once again, we're working with usually these mild words to start. And then as the client gets the hang of identifying just moments of green, they start moving into some of the medium and, and some of the high green words. So this is an example, um, and I'm gonna take questions right after this. This is an example of um, a worksheet that I did. I just typed it out, um, starting with yellow, uh, one of my clients. 
And so I start always start with the uh, behavior, emotions, body, um, the body sensations and the beliefs um, when thinking about something that gets the client fired up when they go into a fight, flight, freeze. So, you know, for example, the client comes in and they're just like, you know, my sister did it again. And, um, you know, she she borrowed money from me and then she disappeared. And I think she's with her friends doing drugs. And you're like, OK, let's talk about what our body is experiencing. We call this state before story. And so what is your body experiencing? It's it's like my body's tight. I'm annoyed I'm irritated. I'm uncomfortable. I feel a tight chest. My mouth is dry and um, accelerate my heart. I can feel my heart pounding and I get loud and I start to talk uncontrollably. I'm like hyper and I feel trapped and powerless. And then, you know, this is a parts interview. The therapist says, well, what does this say about you? And that would be your negative belief. I don't get it. And I need to be in control. Okay. And then what does this say about your environment? It is crazy and uncontrollable. And then we always love to give our parts, um, our zones uh, keywords. And so this client gave it a, what, a WTF. And so um, this is a fun way for us to start getting to know our autonomic nervous system. Red, uh, red zone, shut down, heart rate drops. It's in bed, under weighted blankets, eating, binge eating, watching, um, uh, binge watching shows feeling sad, depressed, overwhelmed, alone, I'm lethargic, lazy, no energy, don't care, hopeless, helpless, life sucks, and I'm confused and lost. So this would be our red zone. And then green, like I said, is something that you're going to work on. We want our clients to find moments of green. When I work with clients, uh, I have a lot of addiction clients that come out of program. We, we work a lot with what's coming out of their meetings and um, serenity. So that would be where this one came from. So this is the first of the two worksheets that you can do with your client. And then this is um, what we're leading up to. We want to identify the state and what triggers the state before we start telling you know, what the story is. So this is gonna be an example of telling us what are your triggers? What is it that gets you fired up? And then what is it like for you when you shut down? And what are ways that you can move in and out of these states? And this makes for great conversations at the beginning of every session. So for example, when I get a text from my ex-husband, I can feel my heart starting to beat. And then what can I do to get out of it? I can immediately text, uh, delete the text. Um, if the text stays there and I know it's about taxes, then I shut down. And what are some things that I can do to get out of a shutdown is I can play tug of war with my dog. This is all about heart rate. If you have a client that you are worried is in their red zone, just get them moving. You know, when we're doing bilateral, if you just have the client start to do something that involves their arms above their um, heart, then you can be assured that the client is not going to be in their red zone. Um, and then when you have a client that's in their yellow, which is going to be a increased heart rate where they're triggered and their heart's beating 110 beats per minute, get in there and desensitize it with your EMD or your EMDR 2.0. Um, and then when you do that, you have access to the green. So once again, I'm just a huge fan of uh, Seth Porges's way of talking about polybagel because it takes all the complicated language out of it. It takes the the um, the picture of the vagus nerve that is wandering throughout the body off the off the table, um, which helps me because that's too much um, learning for me anyway. So let's open this up with questions because what we're going to do is we're actually going to. Um, I don't know if people brought their sheets, but I wanted to spend a little bit of time having you jot down a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red and a little bit of green for yourself. And then just answering some questions that are coming up on how we can use this with our client. Um, just uh, want to honor that this is about um, how protection replaces our client's ability to connect. Dissociation is in isolation. Addiction is in isolation. Healing is in connection. Um, and recovery is in community. So as far as our EMDR dual attention goes, we want our clients to be able to hold one foot in the green while visiting the yellow, where we will go in and use our EMDR tools to head off and avoid the red. So Angie, what do you got for me, if anything? No, I don't have any questions in the chat. So if anybody wants to unmute, 